as I think about adapting, uh, I think about the adaptive corporation. Uh, I think about how do you get the right set of values, the right vision, the uh, right culture inside of a corporation when everything in that typical corporation is focused on middle managers being able to expand and improve on what they already have. Uh, middle managers in most large organizations are given a lot of authority to say no. Uh, they can turn down anything that's not going to help to continue to improve the business they already have, but they have relatively little de decision authority when it comes to approving something that's radically different from what they're doing. And so that's a real challenge for uh, large, established, very successful corporations uh, to be able to adapt. And that's why you see a lot of the real innovation uh, takes place outside of the traditional corporations. And they may eventually buy these companies, integrate them in. Uh, many companies have tried, and with some success from time to time, of doing innovation in small teams, what they call skunk works in large corporations. But for the most part, innovation needs to start with a green field, a clean sheet of paper, where a team doesn't have any legacy baggage to have to carry. Now think of Microsoft. Microsoft, one of the most brilliant uh, companies in the high-tech world. Uh, Bill Gates, clearly one of the great leaders in high technology, a, a pioneer in so many things. And yet, after Bill retired, uh, Microsoft saw mobile was coming, but they set up a set of guidelines that said it had to be some derivative version of Windows. Well, Windows was designed for an entirely different era. It was designed for personal computers, either on your desktop or in your lap. And personal computers were willing to have a long boot cycle. When you go to mobile devices, nobody wanted to wait for a minute or even you know, half a minute for the warm-up process, the boot cycle to take place for a mobile device. Uh, nobody needed the uh, legacy large operating system that Windows required, which used up a lot of battery power. And so, <clears throat> Microsoft, by putting constraints and not adapting to the new industry that was emerging, mobile, uh, missed the mobile industry, certainly in the early years. And the same could be said for Intel. Intel and Microsoft dominated the world of personal computers because between the two of them, they had the most successful platform with the microprocessor that could run the Windows and Microsoft Office applications and Microsoft being able to, in the 1990s, do all of this in software because the Intel processors were just so powerful. But who developed the next generation of microprocessors for mobile? It was an entirely different kind of processor. It was one that had to be low powered, it had to be floating point, which meant uh, it had the ability to use uh, graphics much as you would on a large screen, it had to be able to do graphics on a small screen, and it was actually an innovator, ARM or Qualcomm with their uh, Snapdragon technology who came out to be the leaders in the low-powered mobile processors decades before you know, Intel was successfully developing truly commercial products for that market. So it's very easy for the most successful, most admired corporations with very talented executives to miss the early opportunities to adapt. And in this era where technologies are commoditizing at an incredibly increasing rate, where there are multiple technologies like cloud computing, like um, mobile devices getting smarter and less expensive all the time, like sensors which are enabling machine-to-machine -machine communications, which is enabling machine learning, uh, where automated systems are becoming more and more intelligent, where unstructured data is enabling all kinds of data to be captured in real time and stored very cheaply up in the cloud. The combination of these things is creating a tsunami effect. And that's what I wrote about in my book, Moonshot. What I want you to think about in this series is about the implications of how the adaptive corporation, whether it's an established corporation or whether it's a new business designed to solve a really big problem, is so key.